we're recording. So uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Joel Shoemaker, the library director, obviously for the Illinois Prairie District Public Library. I'm sitting here in our Metamora branch. Uh, we've been closed now uh, for, by the time this goes live, or it'll be over a month. And so, uh, you know, it's been a really weird time for us. Uh, we're still providing virtual services for everyone. And today, um, I'm just gonna cut to the chase. We're here for a very fun interview with one of our favorite authors, Kate Kleiss. She should be over on the other side of the screen. And um, we're here to talk about this book. This is the newest from Kate and Sarah Kleiss called Don't Check Out This Book. Um, and so Kate, why don't you just, why don't we just jump right into it? Tell us a little bit about the newest book, if you will. Well, it, it, the book is really a love letter to, um, well, it's about my love of books and about how books can change a, uh, a, a community. So this rabble rousing librarian whose name is Rita B. Dangerous, sounds like read, read to be dangerous, love comes it. to a small town in Illinois, Appleton, Illinois, which I thought I made up and then I did a quick search and it turns out it's a ghost town in Illinois, so you can't make anything up. Um, and she comes to the small town in Illinois and she completely upsets the apple cart with her collection of um, edgy books. So, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, that's, uh, that's, that's the gist of it. And then yeah. there are lots of various relationships. That's, that's the A plot, as we say. And then there's a B plot and a C plot. But she also is, now Joel, you know, this is an idea I stole from a school librarian. Mm -hmm. But um, this librarian I met in Memphis, Tennessee, Notice that the books that her students most wanted to check out were the same books that they were the most reluctant to check check out because they were embarrassing and you know for any variety of reasons. And so what she did was she put a green dot sticker on the spine of any book that she knew that a child might be wanting to read, but again, just too squeamish to have to confront an adult. And the deal was any book that had this green dot sticker on the spine, you could just slip in your backpack, take home, read it, return it when you want to. And I just thought it was so brilliant. It's so, it's so contrary to the idea of censorship and telling kids what they can't read. This was, it was basically saying, um, uh, whatever problem you have, I have a book about it. We don't have to talk about it. Just come in, help yourself. Um, so that's that's a long, a very long answer to your your short question. No, so that's I love awesome. it. And um, I don't know if I can show that on this screen. Obviously, I'm not very good at technology. We all know that. But there is a green dot here. So Sarah put this on the cover, and then um, and and so it's like a perfect. It's almost meta, I guess, is what you would call it, like book on a book. It's very clever. I love and it. Well, did you notice there's also one on the spine? Can you see oh, that? I did it. Oh yeah, right under the author's names, product placement. There you go. That's so fun. So the, working title, the, the working title for this book for for more than a year was the Green Dot Collection, but it didn't play well with the with the marketing team. Oh <laughs> so really? We, That's we so had... interesting. Um, and so, yeah. will you tell us a little bit about the process of of writing the book, specifically like with your sister? I'm interested because she is in California, right? And you're exactly. in Missouri, in so um, tell us about how that works for you. Right. Well, I defer to her completely in terms of art, design, fonts. I, um, it helps me, and I always tell kids this when they're writing, it really helps me get into a character's voice if I use a different font when I'm writing, because I write everything in these, with these epistolary novels in the first person. So with every character, I give them a, their own font. Just because if you're writing about someone who's very kind of buttoned up, and you use Arial font, you know, straight up and down. Yep. That to me sounds like a school principal, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so I, I, and then Sarah, as soon as Sarah gets it, she immediately throws away all my ideas and uses her own, which are usually much better than my ideas. Um, and she has a much larger collection of fonts. But so I, I do the first several drafts and I do it in plain old Microsoft Word. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we usually sell the book um, at that point when it's still just, oh. Um, you know, words on paper. And then, but she, you know, she takes it all to the next level when she adds the illustrations and the design. Um, uh, so, yeah, so it's pretty easy. You know, we've been making books together since we were kids, mm -hmm. working in our bedroom. Um, so it's very fun. It's the only thing we know how to do, basically. And of course, um, so some of our, since you brought up growing up, I also wanted to ask some of our um, 
patrons that will watch this um, and have seen you. You've been at my libraries every year for the last like, I don't know, seven years. I feel like I feel like I know pretty you pretty well. But for those that don't, that may be watching, um, you grew up in an, our neighboring town of Peoria, Illinois, um, and you have been writing since you were kids. Tell us a little bit about the influence that Peoria plays on um, your novels. Specifically, like I know there's one with the cover that's a house in Peoria. So tell us a little bit. Yeah, about that. one second. Are you going to get it? <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> Perfect. No, that was. So anybody, yeah. if you drive up Main Street in Peoria and make a left on high, Joel, do you know that um, is it called Giant Oak Park? That yeah. is on the yes. left on the on, on the river side of the street. This. A house that looks very much like this is right across the street. It's um, it's called Queen Anne, uh, it, not a Victorian style, but a Queen Anne style of, and it's dark green in Peoria. But we we used to ride our bikes, bikes, you know, from our house on Moss um, up and down, and we'd go down high and those beautiful homes. I mean, we always were making up stories about who might live there and who would live in the cupola. Um, <laughs> But we did not have a great, we went to St. Mark's and had a fine education. Our school library was not great. It was a bunch of donated books. So our mother, God love her, took us to the Peoria Public Library every two weeks from cradle to leaving for high school. And it was not, it was non-negotiable. You would go and you would check out, um, you could get 20 books. <laughs> So with Jill, six kids, imagine, we would we would basically transfer the whole collection That's half like the from library. the library to our house, 120 yeah. books. Yeah, yeah, every two weeks. But those, those public librarians, do you remember when you would do summer reading and, you know, we all did it, and you'd have to line up and give the librarian a book report? It would totally stress oh, me out. But Yeah, um, yeah. So, so yeah, give... Peoria plays a, bit, plays a big... Did I give what? Did you did you give twenty book reports every two weeks? No, I think you would you choose three. Okay. okay. I wasn't sure how that worked. <laughs> yeah, you know, everybody's a little bit different, um, but it, it reminds me a little bit of like accelerated reader, which the kids have now, which I'm sure you're aware of, and and you know they take they take the quizzes yeah. to prove that they've read it. Here, you know, now we are much more relaxed for summer reading. I think I think anymore we just like get a sticker for reading a book and we just trust that you read it <laughs> it's maybe a little maybe a little bit less intimidating i don't know maybe maybe not it, it felt very serious to me as a kid i remember feeling like i it was like a job interview like you know scott corbett the big joke game well this is a book i took it very seriously <laughs> i love that but i loved it and i still you remember in the pure public library you'd walk up those stairs and that big owl hanging oh yeah yeah can you picture that and the smell? I mean, it just, it's very Christian for me. It just takes me back. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So yeah. Um, this may be an unfair question, but um, you this is your, um, well, more than 30. What do we have? 30, 31, uh, 32 Kate Kleist maybe, books now? Maybe. Yeah. Um, yes. Kate Sarah Kleist books. Uh, what is your favorite book that you that you have out right now? I know it's I an unfair question. Say, I thought you were going to say, like, when are you going to stop? <laughs> that's what kids say to me. Kids are like... Ms. Glass, when are you going to stop writing books? <laughs> I always feel like, is my career bothering you? <laughs> um, I don't, I, I mean, I love, regarding The Fountain, mm -hmm. because it took us so long to find a publisher, and that was the first one mm -hmm. that, um, that worked out, so I do like that one. I like this one because it feels very Puria to me. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and, um, um, I don't, I don't know. It's hard to pick. It's hard to pick. So, um, I'm just going to jump in here and tell you my favorite is, uh, <laughs> Sans Well, wait, Sans can I jump in before you jump, before yeah, you jump yeah. in, I can say what, one of the first conversations you and I ever had was, you said, you know, I read your book, Deliver Us From Normal. I didn't love it. <laughs> and I remember thinking, oh, I like this, I like this kid. <laughs> I feel like it probably deserves a reread. You know, I might have been in a weird place in my life. You know how that affects hey, the way you feel about books. Some days, some days peanuts, some days shells, as we say. Well, my favorite though is "Stand Straight, Ella Kate," of course, and oh. uh, and I love it. I love it because um, oh, I love it for a lot of reasons. But my favorite is that there's the real size shoe right in front of the book. Genius. 
So was that Sarah's idea or was that yours or? That was my idea, but we had to fight for it because the publisher, you know, it probably added one cent to the production cost. <laughs> I mean, literally, it probably added one penny having those yeah. end papers. And they said, no, we can't possibly do this. And I said, um, I said, I'll pay for it. It's and that, that was sort of disarming to them. Right. Like, I'll pay a penny a book to have end papers. Right. So, as a, kid, uh, as a kid, I remember loving, like, you open a book and there'd be a map of this city. I love end papers. To me, they, I, I think it's just like when you buy something and it comes in a beautiful box yep. with, like, a light. I don't know. I, to me, it's such a tactile thing, mm -hmm. even though I like ebooks as well. But end papers are just... It, they're an art form and Sarah does such a beautiful job I mean she knows exactly you know she'll always say like oh well this the extra is this so the end papers have to be yellow I'm like how do you know that she's like <laughs> right. hey just, just do and she does do a really good job of it and you said at one point I think um, that most publishers don't do that anymore right because it costs well I guess you were just referencing because it costs a penny <laughs> because, but, but also, Joel, think about it. When they go into paperback, um, if the end papers have any any sort of content for the book, uh, paperbacks do not have end papers. So publishers are like, eh, we don't want to have a whole read. You know, I, I, I'm I'm assuming that's their reasoning. And I just looked, but in your newest book, there's still there's still something here. So um, oh, and we've got need, those, are, those are all those. Joel, do you see the theme of those of those books? Yeah, these are all banned, aren't they? Yes, yes. Or yes, not yes. not banned, but uh, but on that list, yeah. Because uh, oh, yes. I, and I didn't even notice that Is until right challenged? now. Challenged, challenged, yeah, challenged. Uh, yeah, on the on the list from ALA that comes out. It'll actually there will be a new list next week, I think, because it comes out on National Library Week. Do you know how much I would pay to have my book on that challenge list? I know. <laughs> So we, for this new book, we just went ahead and put a banned book sticker on it because it's like, those things are gold. It's like, we're just going to ban it. Put your own stickers <laughs> on. I love that so much. So, uh, yes. so we don't want to make this too long for everyone. Um, so let me just wrap it up by asking, is there anything, um, so you're going to visit us in October. We've been talking about that just so everyone knows at home. Yes. Um, the yes. intention is for an October visit. Is that what we were talking about? I think. Whenever, whenever yeah. things resume, yeah. Yeah, so ho hopefully by then, my goodness. Um, so in the meanwhile, can you tell us, um, is there any top secret information that you can give us about anything that you're working on right now or anything that might be coming out soon? You know, everybody wants to know. Mostly I want. Top secret information. Yeah, top secret information from a children's book author. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, um, I've, got the, I've got the controls right here. Um, <laughs> Well, I'm working on a new book that will be out in May 2021 okay, that I'm great. excited about. And then Sarah, Sarah and I are talking about doing some um, master classes for kids who want to write and illustrate a book this summer. So if anybody's interested, just send me a friend request on Facebook. I'm just Kate Kleiss. Send me a, we're going to post something about that in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, that's exciting. Because, and that'll be, so that'll be online. So anyone can participate in it anywhere, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It sounds like yes. fun. I mean, to me, that's, that's what we should all be thinking with this yeah. stay at home time. It's like, like project forward and think what you want to have accomplished during the time, right? Yeah. And, you know, I think that's a perfect offering too, because, you know, kids are used to going away to summer camp or anything like that. And they may not be able to, um, or certainly not in the traditional sense this year. So it sounds like, it sounds like a lot of fun. And I think something that a lot of people should be interested in. So that's really exciting. Hey, Jill, I think you have to tell your patrons. I'm afraid people are going to be worried that you have been stuck in your library for the past three weeks. Is, is that where you're living now? Or are you able to go home? <laughs> <laughs> we do. Well, I do get to go home, which is great. Um, you know, we, we still... What's, what'd you say? I can see you, like, rattling around in there with a mask on by yourself. Yeah. Yeah, like so, Miss Havisham in Great Expectations. Yeah, right. So some of our uh, some of our patrons uh, may know. You know, we have we have a pet, a library pet. Um, so uh, for a while at the beginning of this, I had to come in simply to you know to feed uh, Norbert, our our library lizard. Um, but he is now actually at home uh, with one of my employees. 
So um, he's being well taken care of. Um, and th so that's great. That's one less thing that I have to worry about. But you know, I'm, I'm still here, you know, maintaining our facilities and providing the virtual services that we can. And um, we're still here. We want people to know that we're still here. If you have questions or concerns about an account or something, we want you to keep your books. If you're still watching, we want you to keep your books. We don't want you to bring them back right now. Um, but we're still here and, uh, and we want to keep in touch with our patrons. Um, so I do come here on occasion, but I also do get to go home, which is nice. <laughs> So, uh, can we, we just, I don't like the thought of you being locked in the library for a month. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so just thanks so much for, for popping in and doing this for us. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you um, in October uh, or, or, you know, whenever we can. And uh, in the meantime, uh, patrons should also know that we have 30 copies of this book we're giving away. I said 30, but I don't know if that's the right number. So t I take that back. We have copies of this to give away. And, uh, and so we'll figure out whether we're going to do that during the summer and then they can just bring them back to get them signed or if we'll hold them um, until you get here. We'll figure out how we're going to do that. Um, we'll figure it out. We're still having a summer reading program. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll determine um, how much of that will be virtual um, or how much of that we can do in person um, after the quarantine is over. So thank you so much. And uh, we'll look thank forward you, to seeing you soon. Okay, stay safe. Okay. Bye. I'm the recording.